there's no better feeling than a personal win. And the State Farm Personal Price Plan can help you do just that. Talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings, and eligibility vary by state. Everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. All right, I'm trying to find out here by uh, what what it was called back in the old days when it was played at uh, well, it was played at the same golf course, Firestone, Firestone Country Club. But uh, it started being the World Series in uh, uh, 2000. No, way before uh, 1999. It was no 1999. It was the world golf event that became a successor to the World Series of Golf. Which, uh, but there's always how... been something. Yes, yeah. At when Firestone. I, when I was a kid in Fulton, Minnesota, watching on the Philco in black and white, there was a Firestone. I remember that. Uh, I remember them talking about the 600. And, they had a name for the 610 yard par five. It was the monster, or the green monster, or the some kind of monster. Do you approve of what the Twins have done this week? No. Okay. I go. I was taken a task by Height and Reavers. They're because, both on board. What? Because I've heard Levine, Levine was on with you. Yes. And he was on with Judd and Phil. Mm-hmm. And I have nothing personal. I don't know him. I have no. For all I know, he's a wonderful human being. That that wasn't my point. He's a, he's a really good guy. Okay, great. What I said is, I just felt like I was hearing corporate. Yes. BS. Yeah. yeah, well, it's a different lingo than you heard from Calvin. I guess. That. Maybe that's it. <laughs> it's not Calvin. No, but I think they got uh, overzealous. Uh, they got a decent return, I believe, for Escobar and Presley. Although, here's what I don't like, Joe. All right. I said this yesterday on the... The, the the highly rated uh, ride with Racy. Yep. If you if you look at certain demographics, right. uh, anyway, the uh, they had this spring, they had a foundation. Mm-hmm. Now Buxton having a wasted year, and Snow having what is to this point been a wasted wasted year, really cut into the foundation. The, it, I I understand Dozier. And Escobar were part of that foundation. Right. Rather than signing them, they let them go. Mm -hmm. And this idea that they couldn't sign them Mm -hmm. is idiotic. They could have called Eduardo Escobar in in June and said, we'll give you three years, 36 million. He would have taken it. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a report that they did do that, though. Uh, that much money? No, that they had offered him an extension and they didn't get very far with his representation. Because well, they might have been lowballing. Okay. Anyway. And uh, Dozier, okay, you know. If you're going to move him, you better move him in June when there might be a market for him, even though he's not playing that well, and before eight other second basemen become available because they traded him for nothing. Mm-hmm. And not only for nothing, they had to take nothing back for the same price. Mm-hmm. $9 million, Logan Forsythe. You might as well have let him play out the season and say goodbye. Well, you yeah. got nothing in return. You got a another chump outfielder who you know can go to triple a and in three years from now and hit a home run and you got a nothing pitcher who they'll probably put on a roster like Derek dietrich ends and keep him around there for three years and they are there's no foundation you are back to ground zero 
with this franchise. You're back to ground zero with this ball club. Uh, That's my, watch Dozier get hot now, too. What did oh, he have last, last night? Days? He hit a home run, home run a double, double and a single. Yeah. And he hit the home run to straightaway center. He didn't pull it. Why didn't was take, he doing that every day didn't here? take the Dodgers long to fix him. They got somebody to go out there to the cage with him and said, <laughs> hey, you know, you're strong. You can hit it out to center. And he said, oh, okay, nobody ever told me that. Mm-hmm. So he hit it out. I, I, uh, I, I think that this trading deadline in baseball has become this, uh, oh, this manic, a period where, uh, oh, we, we're either buyers or sellers. Or you can be, you know, if somebody makes us a good offer, we'll, we'll listen. take it. Yeah. yeah, if somebody makes us a good offer, we'll listen. But we're not going to say, we got to get rid of these five guys. What the hell difference does it make if Lance Lynn walks or not? Who mm-hmm. cares? You're not going to get anything great for him. Mm-hmm. You got a couple of suspects, I guess. But uh, to me... You added five veterans because you had a foundation. Now, it would be idiotic for them to spend any money. This off. They, They're going to have a $60 million payroll next mm-hmm. year. They're going to be back to the good old days, down groveling on their stomachs in a horse bleep division, and uh, there's no foundation. There's nothing here. Buxton, there's two... Uh, obstacles to his superstardom. Mm -hmm. He can't hit, and he can't stay healthy. (laughs) Beyond that, 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 but if it was a track meet, if you put a baton in his hand, he would get to the finish line faster than anybody. But he can't hit. And Sano, okay, if he, I would put him in a bubble all winter and not let him get near food <laughs> near enormous amounts of food yeah. and alcohol right if he stays like this he's got a chance mm-hmm. but he won't okay he'll go home and eat the dominican republic <laughs> <laughs> there'll be sharks swimming by and he'll grab him and put him on a grill and eat the whole damn thing how do you respond to this reavers because you took me to task <laughs> well i disagree with pat because i just i don't know and, and i brought this up the other day because twins fans were outraged after the after they had made the, the series of moves, but they're awful. What do you want them to do? Hang on to these guys? I mean, I'd, I'd rather that they at least got what a chance on you, something as opposed to hanging on to Brian Dozier, is, Esk- Eduardo Escobar, Lance Lynn, you're, and then, and then, and then what, 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 what good does that do? One has to listen. Okay, but you're <laughs> guaranteeing <laughs> you're going to be awful for the next three years. Okay, but that doesn't mean you can't still improve the ball club in the offseason. By either trade, free Who? agency, and whatnot. I, I, Who's going to come in? But Pat, two years ago when they lost 103 seasons, they 103. overachieved. They overachieved in 2017. We're all in agreement with that. But the the depth of this organization it was so bare, and it was so evident on that trip that you made in Chicago that showed you just how far away this organization well, part is. Part of it from, has to do with these guys being idiots on who they take off the roster and who they keep. Oh, I won't disagree Randy with that. Randy Rosario, a left-hander who throws 95, who has a one nine seven ERA for the Cubs. Mm-hmm. We put him on waivers so he can keep Dietrich Enns. Oh, what I don't disagree with that. What the hell is wrong with you idiots? And that's when you put it's him on just probation. My opinion, man. That's when you put him on probation. Yeah, I did. And, and JC, they, JT Chargois, he throws 90, 95, 96, 97. Okay, he's disappointed you with his injuries and the like, but he still throws high 90s and has got a chance compared to some of these mutts that you've kept on the 40 man roster who can't pitch. That's my opinion. If you wanted my, if that's what you were looking for, whether my, I agree, my, my take whether was, I agreed with them or not, my, my take was completely less complicated than yours. Yes, and that is, you're in a pretty bad division. Mm-hmm. Cleveland can be had. Not now, though. Well, you you were you were eight games back starting the week. Now you're ten. Uh, I would have. I, you, to me, you've just said, you know, the rest of the season means nothing to us. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The rest of this season, they just said 2019 and 2020 don't mean anything to them. Ben? Yes, good afternoon. Say, uh, I was out to dinner with some friends last night. They've been 20-year ticket uh, holders, season ticket holders, and they're, they're not re-upping. They're, they're so fed up now. He, he basically said, these two guys that are running the show now, 
not sure who, who exactly they are. <laughs> um, basically, that these guys never played baseball. They don't understand. They're they're kind of the money ballers now. They're all about the dollars and cents and nothing else. Well, they're about they, inventory. They're about inventory, and they if they can tr- trade a guy, they're going to lose and get three players that maybe someday they got a twelve percent chance of playing in the big leagues. They're going to do that, and I. I there's there's a couple of these trades I could go for, but I don't believe in trading something for nothing, and that's what they did with Dozier. Well, and that's uh, you had mentioned it earlier. They they're starting at ground zero again. Yes. And how, how many years is that going to take them? Well, the good thing is when you get down to ground zero in this division, there's three other teams right there with you. <laughs> there's only one up there. Cleveland's the only one up there. So, all right, well, there we go. Yes, go Vikes. That guy had the pipes, didn't he? Yes. You sound like a sound radio like guy. A radio sound guy like a radio guy. Ladies and gentlemen. guy that's from the AM station at Breckenridge, I think. <laughs> he's. Your question about what I, the Twins, why would you explain to me why every time Tiger, no matter how well Tiger Woods is playing a round of golf, if he gets to 17 or 18, he feels an obligation to hit one in the woods. Because he still thinks he can finish with the kind of flourish that he used to finish mm-hmm. with, where what he should do instead is realize, I can't finish mm-hmm. like I used to finish. Just make a par. And I need to get a par here, so therefore, I'm going to tee off with a three iron. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he's, uh, he, hit, he hit one in the trees on like 16 or a little bit. No, he hit it in the kind of thick rough, and he made his par there. But then the next hole, he hit it. Hit it, uh, last hole, driver. Hit they're it playing right. at they're playing at the venerable Firestone. Firestone, it's it confuses people because it's called the Bridgestone Invitational, but it's still Firestone Country Club. Yeah, but they, because Bridgestone took over Firestone. Yeah, but so. you know what they got there? Trees. Yes, there's a do. local movement here. A lot of courses trees. in the metro area. We got to get rid of trees, yeah, right? Well, that's, if it's good enough for Firestone, <laughs> yes, I think that it's it's okay not to be overgrown with them, but you got to have some. Where was you where should you, have to pay the penalty if you hit? Help me. What where the Pittsburgh course where Dustin Johnson Oakmont. won the Open to Oakmont? It, it looked like a cornfield. Yeah, they they changed everything. That. Yes, they they took out all the trees. It's yeah, but it's like it used to be. Well, that's because there were no, you know, they, it was a farmland, and that because trees were an invasive species. But yes, but here's the deal: when we made Oakmont, what did we do? We planted trees. Right. So then we wanted to have so the original designers wanted to have trees it just was going to take a while to grow them mm-hmm. well i've run into a lot of people who uh, you want to uh, break it down for me and well, they all it. think they're playing golf in scotland yeah. let's Unless you're on the Firth, there ain't no Firth. ocean. Here. Unless you're on a Firth, you got to be on a Firth. You got to be on a Firth, and you preferably you the Firth need, the Fourth. So yes, you don't need any links golf courses and trees and um, streams and water. It's just fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to talk funny. Yeah. yeah. Who were we talking? Was that Levine we were talking to two days ago that almost sounded like me there on, up from Target Field for about <laughs> ten seconds? <laughs> It went, uh, went kaflui. Yeah. <laughs> you were standing outside a pub in yes. Durleton, Scotland. Yes. Were you in Durleton? No, uh, Gullen. Gullen. Gullen, Gullen right. Scotland. Yes. Yeah. We ended up at Durleton. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we little... Well, and they were what? From here to yeah. this, the other side of the building apart from each other two three miles so what's today off day for the club today yeah huh? we get a much needed off day to uh to uh, reconnoiter oh and... enough enough kenny's what? angry i'm done with the twins please you guys you're breaking it down every day we know they suck who cares why enough well, football tomorrow rally around that uh, tonight they play, there a game uh, no tonight there's a game the Hall You're of Fame, kidding. the Hall of Fame game on Hall of Fame weekend. Instead of, having a, 
Instead of having it on Monday, they're having it on Thursday. But you got to be yeah. kidding Suits, me. you will have NFL in your life every weekend now until the Super Bowl. The Welcome of, to the rest of your life. The Baltimore of, and the Chicago tonight, 7 yes. o'clock, NBC. Yes, and here's the deal. <laughs> Nobody's going to play tonight. Trubisky and Flacco will each play one series maximum, and uh, nobody's going to play tonight. They all... The teams who have to play this game hate it because they get an extra exhibition game. They have to play five instead of four. Wait, which two major league teams had to play uh, for All Star Weekend in Cooperstown? I wonder. I don't know who they took in this year. I think I think they still play that game. Sometimes it's not that same weekend though, but they do still have a game there. Mm-hmm. I was there one year. I was there twice with the Twins. I've been there many times. Many times. Been there many times. My the first time I came there. Uh, the Hall of Fame ceremonies were on the same day. The Twins were uh, in in town waiting to play the game. The Hall of Fame ceremonies were being held out there, and they were all downstairs bowling. Nobody, none of the players, I was very disappointed. All the players went downstairs bowling. They didn't watch the ceremonies. But the highlight of that was Cool Papa Bell was there, one of the mm-hmm. great Negro League players. Mm-hmm. And I was, one, I was sitting in the dugout before the game while they were taking a little bit of BP, and he came all the way down the aisle. Cool Papa Bell. Cool Papa Bell. Cool Papa Bell. Introducing right. himself. Cool well, Papa Bell. Many times. He was a very cool guy. The cool highlight Papa. for us on one trip was uh, seeing poor Pete Rose sculling around, <laughs> scuttling around the back alleys with his but he Zubas, had Zubas on. on. Yeah, more yeah. Zubas. Trying to sell. Trying uh, to sell an autograph. Yeah. Oh, wow. my God. You know, he had a bad haircut. Remember the guy that wore the, <laughs> the Yankees hat? <laughs> the Babe Ruth lookalike? Yeah. Yeah. It was eerie. I have pictures it was of that. eerie. Yes, I've seen him. Yeah, he, I think he's probably, it's a gig for him, right? Yes, he shows up. He's never early. not had a bad haircut. Well, that was, how many years he, ago was yeah. that? Came out, he walked out of the womb with a bad haircut. <laughs> he's going to go back into the ground mm-hmm. with one. Was that 17 years ago? Well, Puck whenever. Was, uh, it was old, for Puck, right? 2001? 2002? Oh, 01. 01. 01. Yeah. Summer's yeah. last year. Was, last year was 95. He got voted in in 2000 and got inducted in 2001. Wasn't 01 the year? When, in fact, weren't we in Cooperstown when the Vikings lost a player to dehydration? Corey Stringer, yeah. Corey Stringer. I, I stopped on the way back to go to the funeral. Yeah. Tried to do Jimmy Breslin and go out to the uh, to the grave diggers while the service was going on, yeah. but uh, didn't didn't quite write it as well. Nothing might ever beat that column. <laughs> no. All right. You familiar with that column, Kenny? Uh, you talking to me? Yeah. No. no, I'm not. I am. I haven't that- read. I haven't read Breslin. I don't. I mean, well, one of his greatest was other than knowing who he is. On the morning of JFK's funeral, he goes to the gravedigger's house mm-hmm. and has the breakfast with him, gets the whole deal, goes with him. Uh, it was really. Even if he made up half of it, it was fantastic. While they're digging the grave. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. How do you get that idea? It's a pretty good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. You know what? That non conventional. Non conventional. You know what? He, he was thinking outside the box. He really was. Yeah. This I morning, think he uh, was also in London for Churchill's death. This morning I looked up and read Royce's column about sprint racing in southern Minnesota. I enjoyed that. That was a couple of weeks ago. That was a piece of writing, yes. sir. Yeah. Well, it's uh, good luck to him down there. They've. Uh, I, I think it stopped to raining you? finally. What I took away from that, and I, I really enjoyed your focus, was the uh, the family focus that racing is. I mean, we're talking people in charge of that track now, whose great, if I got this right, great grandfather started it. Well, was one of the earliest drivers, the yeah. first champion they yeah. had. Yeah, it's uh, and that's how it is up in my neighborhood. I'm watching now. I'm watching third generation drivers, uh, drivers whose grandpas I was watching in the in the uh, late seventies. Might be the most generational of all sports. You, you ever are. race? Uh, not not cars. No. no. We'll be back in just a moment, but now thanks to our great friends in Owatonna, Minnesota, at Federated Insurance, where it's their business to know to, to protect your business. And nobody I did at Elko once better than uh, Federated. It's Bruce Vale from the Wall Street Journal and Your Money Now. Well, stocks were mixed at the close for a second straight day. The Dow Jones Industrial again dropping into negative territory. This time at the last minute, the blue chip index ended down seven points today. But the Nasdaq Composite gained 95, and the S&P 500 picked up 13 points. Apple shares gained 3% today, and the gain put Apple over the $1 trillion mark for its market capitalization. Apple is the first company to reach that lofty plateau. The Trump administration 
Commission is proposing to freeze fuel efficiency standards for cars and light trucks in 2020, a move that will ease rules for automakers and likely intensify a legal fight with California. The proposal would eliminate the sharp increase in fuel economy requirements adopted under the Obama administration in collaboration with California. And M&M fans have spoken. Crunchy Mint has been selected as the winning flavor in the 2018 flavor vote. Crunchy Mint beat out Crunchy Espresso and Crunchy Raspberry in online voting and will join the M&M's lineup this month and be in stores for the next 18 months. I'm Bruce Vail with your money now on 1500 ESPN. Okay, then we thank you very much and we'll uh, talk again tomorrow, Friday tomorrow. Thank Thanks. goodness. Um, checking your traffic here. This one's sponsored by your locally owned Domino's. And sure enough, northbound 35W is slower than needed from County C up to U.S. Highway 10. Westbound 10 itself, plug ugly. County 96 up to that merge with northbound W and eastbound 694 pell mell on and off the brakes from uh, the Mississippi all the way over to the Highway 51 interchange. Introducing Domino's Hotspots. Get pizza delivered to outdoor locations like parks, beaches, and more. Not at home, not a problem. Tip.com. I found a reason for you to be on Twitter, Such. There is none, but yeah. It's a Twitter account called People of Craigslist. (laughs) Now, you and I have had this conversation many times on and off the air about the crazy Craigslist ads we see. And uh, I, every time I open Craigslist, I feel the need to vent. I get really upset with mm-hmm. these people. The first ad that comes up is a car ad for a 1999 Toyota Corolla. And it's got a whole bunch of pictures. And the ad goes, you want a car that gets the job done? You want a car that's hassle-free? You want a car that literally no one will ever compliment you on? Well, look no further, my friend. <laughs> How many words are incorrectly spelled? No, this is a really good ad. Oh. This is a funny ad. Uh, let's talk about features. Bluetooth? Nope. Sunroof? Nope. <laughs> Fancy wheels? Nope. Rear view mirror or camera? Nope. But it's got a transparent rear window, and you have a bleeping neck that can turn. <laughs> okay. Kenny, I don't have... I just tried to do a search for people P-P- on... Cra- PPL of okay. Craigslist. Oh, that kind of... Let me tell you a story. One day, my Corolla started making a strange noise. I didn't give a bleep, ignored it. It went away. The end. And he goes on and on like this with these rips on his Toyota Corolla. What's he want for it? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. He probably sold it in a heartbeat. Yeah, ads like that. But there's all sorts of really funny ads in here. And then the, the normal misspellings. I love and everything the one that else. say needs new brakes. B R A B R E A K S. And I've noticed there's a lot of ads in here from uh, Minneapolis, Minneapolis Craig. List. So somebody from town here is contributing quite a bit. Here's John Haidt. Thanks, Joe. Partly sunny, 68 degrees. Twins off today, opening up a three-game series against the Royals at Target Field tomorrow night. At the Bridgestone... Who we got coming in? The Royals. Kansas City. Ooh, what a battle. <laughs> Tickets will be available. At the Bridgestone Invitational today, Kyle Stanley's in the lead at 7-under. There's a whole bunch of guys tied at 5-under, and then a whole bunch of guys at 4-under, including Tiger Woods. News notes from today, Wright Patterson Air Force Base said there was no active shooter incident at the Dayton, Ohio military base today, saying all base personnel are safe. Earlier, the base said security forces in the fire department responded to a reported active shooter incident at 12.40 p.m. (laughs) That base personnel were directed to shelter in place until it was investigated. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives also said it was responding to the scene at the time. Police at Wright State University, a couple of miles from the base, were informed the base gave an all-clear message around 3 o'clock. An inmate at the Minnesota Correctional Facility in Stillwater now has been charged in the death of Corrections Officer Joseph Gom. 42-year-old Edward Mohammed Johnson charged with second-degree non-firearm murder and second-degree non-firearm assault, according to the complaint. The complaint says officers and medical personnel responded to a call of a staff assault at the prison just after 1.30 in the afternoon, July 18th. Responders found Gom with substantial injuries to his head and his face in the M shop on the third building of uh, third floor, excuse me, building 20. Gom was transported to Regions Hospital where he later died. Investigation revealed Johnson had checked out a hammer when he reported to work that day. Johnson still in prison. He had already been convicted of murder of his former girlfriend in 2002. Here's an ad who's for a guy who's giving away. The ad just says, free 
oddly straight banana. And there's a picture of it, and it's a banana, and it is straight. <laughs> there's a whole paragraph describing this. What is wrong with people? <laughs> He's lonely. Oh, it's so this funny. This is like me when I tweeted out the picture of the banana that was hard. I couldn't figure out why it was, you know, it turned out to be a plantain. <laughs> Authorities still trying to figure out. Beat somebody up with a plan. <laughs> Here's one for an old cement mixer. Still works. Seventy five dollars. It's a picture of an old bag mixing cement. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody mix cement anymore? Yeah, if you're doing just a couple of bags, it's no big deal. Authorities still trying to figure Put some out some stairs together. <laughs> Authorities still trying to figure out the cause of that hour-long 911 service failure yesterday in Minnesota. Russians. The widespread disruption knocked out emergency lines to first responders in cities, county sheriff's offices, and at the airport here. Uh, some agencies said the disruption primarily affected calls from landlines. CenturyLink issued a one-sentence statement saying the cause for the failure remains under investigation. TSA is considering ending screening of passengers at smaller airports across the country to focus security efforts at bigger airports. It's unclear how advanced that proposal is, whether it will ever be adopted, but... Let's announce it out there so the fellas know where to sneak in. Yeah, let's go to Sioux Falls, (laughs) get on the plane, then fly to Minneapolis. We're already in. Yeah, right. Actually, aviation security experts immediately reacted with uh, the same alarm you guys just did, (laughs) saying that dropping security at smaller airports would make those flights an inviting target for terrorists. Mm -hmm. And Transportation Security Administration is thinking about uh, whether or not to end passenger screening at about 150 airports. Ports that serve planes with 60 seats or fewer. See, Pat, I thought you'd go for this. <laughs> well, I'd take, I'd take a, I'd take a shot. Yeah. Uh, in the statement today, TSA said no decision has been made. They say they're still looking into the idea. Now, maybe if the plane was the size of that one I took from Denver to Cheyenne, mm-hmm. where they made us two fat guys. <laughs> One one of us fat guys moved to the other side of the plane because left. I, otherwise, right. that baby would have been flying like this. <laughs> Don't sneeze. <laughs> I think it was a sixteen seater. He had to walk in like this. <laughs> Police now is a suspect in the shooting of that doctor that once treated President Bush for two decades. Apparently. Joseph Pappas held a grudge against the cardiologist who performed the surgery that left his mother dead on the operating table. The 62-year-old Pappas, according to authorities, planned Dr. Mark Hausneck's killing over his mother's death and last month followed him as he rode his bicycle to work. Wasn't that 20 years ago or so? 20 years ago, yeah. Wow. Both men were on their bikes July 20th when Pappas mm-hmm. rode past House Neck before turning around and fatally shooting him. God almighty. A prominent surgeon and former cardiologist for President George H.W. Bush was found near a construction site with hundreds of workers, but the equipment was loud enough to mask the sounds of gunfire. Authorities now are still looking for Pappas, and they say uh, he is actually a former law enforcement officer. They say he should be considered dangerous and wow. Was it heart surgery? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, he must have been close to mom, huh? Stuff happens in heart surgery. That's right. Mm -hmm. Molson Coors plans to sell pot-infused drinks in Canada, where consumable marijuana will become legal next year. So we get the malt and the herbs? Apparently, yes. It's only $180 for a (laughs) six-pack. Right. Right. (laughs) Belly up to the bar, kiddos. Molson Coors Brewing Company, based in Colorado, which along with Washington were the first states to legalize recreational use, Recreational marijuana becomes legal in Canada in October, but consumable forms of the drug will be legal there in 2019. The brewer said that its Canadian division will partner with the Canadian cannabis producer, the Hydroapothecary Corp., to develop a non-alcoholic drink that contains marijuana. Molson Coors Canada will hold a 57.5% controlling stake in the standalone venture. Hydro Apothecary will own the remaining ownership All, All these alternate ways of... Uh, consuming marijuana doesn't it just show a general impatience? I mean, isn't aren't you supposed to sit there and 
smoke the big, <laughs> the big, big, big Bob Marley. Don't we have it? Uh, yeah, aren't you? Isn't that part of the joy of it? Is with the, the Pink Floyd? With the smoke, though, comes the stink. When you're doing edibles or something yeah. else, there's yeah, but, no but, smell. But, but if you do an edible, what fun is it? Well, you sit in your office eating... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> office? <laughs> you eat Doritos. I don't see a palatial eating office a for of jump. Jump. You know you what know? you want? You want the vending machine when they're in there uh, with the... Uh, you know, I don't know. Synthetic marijuana makes no sense to me. How come the gummy bears are always out of this damn thing? <laughs> I'm not seeing. Were, a... How come there were three or four bags of chips over here today? <laughs> I don't know, but I just, just tried a Dorito chili I, lime. I, I looked That's at right it. I wouldn't we, try. Gotta, one. They uh, show those. those at they were. six a.m. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It and took there was that, took all day to leave. There was a lot, no, a lot more than what you saw. Huh. If you're taken to the reefer, that would be the open buffet over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me to the reefer. <laughs> Meanwhile, speaking the of... The weed, we call it. Right, or the, the weed. Pot. You're taking to the weed. The pot. The pot. Wacky <laughs> tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the, uh, speaking of beer sales... I've never met anybody who needs to smoke weed more than you. <laughs> Seriously. You're the one person on you the know, planet. I was that never you, really much of a smoker. You really need to be high <laughs> all the time for the rest of your life. Meanwhile, sales of the biggest U.S. beer brands are dropping. Bud Light, Budweiser, and Heineken have each dropped more than 3% during the 12-week period ending June 18th, according to a recent Cowan & Company report. Sam Adams saw its sales plunge 14%. Whoa. Between, they started it. They started this whole thing. I hope they're happy. Between January and May, U.S. brewers shipped 2.5 million fewer barrels than the year before, according to the Beer Institute Trade Group, a drop of about 3.7%. Uh, shares of Molson Coors, the parent of Miller Coors, fell to a four-year low after it reported a 3.8% fall in volume in Is that the, the beer, beer snobs bringing everything down? Yes. Is that what it yeah, is? They're, bringing, they're drinking other stuff. Reaver's I crowd. A, I got a question. <laughs> How's Summit doing? They started it all in the Twin Cities. How, how are they well. doing? They still yeah. doing well? They've, oh, yeah. they've plateaued a tad, but they're still doing extremely yeah. well. Where right, are yeah. they? Right down the street here? Where's down the... by Montreal and um, uh, West, West Summit. Seventh. Okay. Just a moment. One uh, more football-related note. A young Connecticut woman didn't want to ever lose the autograph she got from Tom Brady. A New England Patriots star signed 19-year-old Megan... So she tattooed it on her butt. Next story. <laughs> tattooed it on her arm, actually. We'll just, wow. She actually had him sign the arm and then tattooed it, so we'll move on what from the, that one. <laughs> what, I heard you a little bit this morning. You were just as cheery as could be. What yeah. happened? We got the, crispy, what Kenny, happened, now. What happened in the six hours between your, when you departed? You didn't get a nap in, you did you? lose a snowmobile or something? <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, I'm re-watching Deadwood. I think Al Swearingen oh, might oh. have something to do with that. Oh, That's okay. Yeah, that'll I'm, make I'm you I'm halfway problem. through season He was two. a... He had high standards for the behavior of others, Al did. I've got a lot of names I really need to call you guys. None of them airworthy right now. All inspired by Al Swearingen, by the way. Uh, I should mention one other sport note that Mr. Reavers just showed me on Twitter. Yes. Uh, the Yankees, uh, Sonny Gray's struggling. Yes. Uh, they've now announced they've moved him to the bullpen. And, and taking his spot in the rotation is... Clean shaven, <laughs> clean yeah. cut. Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn. <laughs> Get Dave. ready for five-hour baseball Dave. games, Yankee Nation. By the way, we have some created advertising out at the 3M Championship somebody just sent to me. Yeah? Uh, you know, we, we always have advertising on the toilets, okay. on the satellites. Yep. Sure. This year, we got like a double a double uh, stooler there. Two of them. So double 50, 1,500 ESPN Twin Cities. Check out our stream, it says, and then it shows the uh, iPhone. That is some serious comedy. (laughs) You are there tomorrow, aren't you? Yes, we're there tomorrow. And you'll be there checking streams? Will you be (laughs) Cowboy? Yeah. You're taunting guys my age when you talk about that. (laughs) Try to, uh, (laughs) if you will, could you try to get a selfie of yourself at that (laughs) mirror? Yeah, we could probably do that. In Massachusetts, a witness captured video of a slow speed chase that involved police and a man who stole a motorized shopping cart from Walmart. George Costanza. (laughs) Daniel Williams captured the video in Somerville, Massachusetts. He spotted a police car chasing a man on a mobility scooter. (laughs) 
the shopping cart kind. Hey, from John, Walmart. I'm starting to side with Ken. Right? <laughs> you know, uh, some of these are pretty weak. All right, I'll move on to the next one. You know, any any slow speed chase involving a John Deere lawn tractor, <laughs> a horse, <laughs> or a, a band, those. motorized shopping cart. No, no, John. Hey, yeah, how John. about a golf cart? Yes. John, nope. yes, Chris. Nope. Nope. nope, golf cart. Welcome yeah. back, buddy. Yeah, it's good to be back. <laughs> well, here you go. You want? One? Let's. We're going to live on the edge with these next. Is, oh, here we go. Uh, get uh, next two. We're living on the edge. Be edgy. We got permission from uh, Jenny to be edgy. The CDC has a message for you. You might have. Okay. <laughs> if you're having sex with a condom, do not remove it, wash it, hang it up to dry, and then reuse it. Well, whoever did people that. were doing that. Apparently, yes, the right. centers for it's awfully frugal. Yes, um. that is. Wow, <laughs> they had to be a sweet Lutherans that That's were like trying that, to shoot man. two ducks with one shot. <laughs> the, so you shouldn't put them on the clothesline. Huh? Well, I don't know. The the centers, they must have been Finlanders from Esco. <laughs> the centers for disease control <laughs> tweeted that out. Yes, they wrote, "We say it because people do it." No, they don't. Nobody that's, does that. That's what it says. They're lying. Use a fresh one for each <laughs> condom <pack>. expert, Patrick <laughs> Royce. <laughs> <You're lying. laughs> Elizabeth Taroni, an epidemiologist with the CDC's Division of STD Prevention, says simply, they won't work as well the second Let's time. Let's call up Adrian Peterson and ask him oh, if he oh believes this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth said incorrect I heard use. he had another one. No. Really? That's what I heard. Wow. Another what? Another baby child. With I, the hopefully wife? with mom, I hope. I don't know. I just heard he had another one. He's got eight. Eight is enough, I guess. He should get himself fixed. Yep. <laughs> uh, one more edgy one, okay? Okay. Uh, this one. This one's hard to believe this happened, but it apparently did. An African-American woman says Puget Sound Energy emailed her a racial slur to use as a temporary password <laughs> in her online account. Are you kidding me? Nope. Really? Eric Conway, Erica, I'm sorry, Conway, okay. Thinks the insult was deliberate. Company says it wasn't. Which word? She said, uh, hang on. She said, I clicked forget password and got a temporary password from the company. Uh, it was the N word, but ending in an A. She says she was quite shocked when she saw it. Two G's? Yeah, that's correct. Two G's. Well, that's a racial slur. Yes, it is. And then with an EA on the end of it? E-A. What do you mean with, an EA? With an A on the end. Just an A. Oh, okay. N-I-G-G-A. Thank you. Yeah, well, that might have been a... Ah, the computer early. might have uh, failed on that one, huh? Uh, Conway is a longtime volunteer for the Seattle chapter of the NAACP. Oh, she, she was not that happy. Was, that was misfortune. Uh, PSE spokeswoman Janet Kim said, uh, this was offensive. No question about that. We apologize to this customer, the community, for what has happened, and we're trying to do what we can to make it right. She says the slur was a computer-generated mistake. I'm with I'm with the uh, company. She said these passwords are generated automatically, so they go straight from the system straight to the customers. No employee ever gets to see it. Conway and the Seattle NAACP want a meeting with PSE to talk about the incident. We have a racist computer, is what you're telling me. <laughs> Honky computer. Yes, yeah. right. <laughs> it came from a white computer. <laughs> PSE says it has taken immediate steps to make sure temporary passwords are a scrambled mix of letters and numbers. And next month, it'll begin a, using a new system that gets rid of temporary passwords altogether. Would you like to own Queen Elizabeth II's vintage Rolls Royce? Yes. The car will be sold on September 8th by Auctioneer's Bottoms. She has a- quit driving at age 92? It's the uh, Rolls Royce, actually, that uh, it's a Phantom Four mm-hmm. that she used to travel in, and Prince Philip, actually. They've used it for many royal outings and events. Do we have a year of, of Yes. It was one of only 18 models uh, of the Phantom Fours that were made between 1950 and 1956. That baby's got to be car. worth a half a million. Two point, no, well, no, 2.7 2. million. Is what they're, uh, well, because be of the provenance, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not sure. the, the car itself wouldn't be worth that. Well, well the problem is yeah. when uh, a young yeah. Charles drove it, he went through the bank, and so there's a big <laughs> yellow mark all the way down when yeah. he went by the uh, pole and didn't tell Queenie about it. It looks just like the Grey Poupon uh, rolls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In addition to the Queen's vintage rolls being put up for sale, another vehicle that will thing be is just straight up ugly. Will be auctioned wow. off. I love it. 
Oh, oh, it's used. Joe. Oh, it's Let me gorgeous. See. Oh, Joe. I bet the dashboard's like an airplane. Oh, yeah. That's the cool. other, uh, the other rolls. Yes. There's a 1985 model that the royal family's used. Zooch, I would chop that thing and lower that roof <laughs> and put on some 88. You have it looking like the monster mobile. Put, on that, bo- <laughs> put on that bouncy kit like Snoop has. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you donk it up. Hey, Johnny, has the, it they would donk has it. the queen recovered from trying to keep up with Trump the other day uh, when he was <laughs> running away from her? while she was trying to walk why the 92 year old matron was trying to walk across the ro- uh, the grass and he was hauling ass across <laughs> it was a man in a hurry what uh, an idiot this rolls by the way the queen has had she says for more than six decades use it for tours in the uk and other parts of how the world. did you manage to bring trump into a discussion <laughs> every time I about think of rolls the, royce every time i think of the <laughs> wow. queen i think of him walking in front of her like what's taking you so long i didn't you vote know? for him the first time around but i'm voting for him the second yeah. time around he's got to get a second term just for the theater <laughs> oh my god we need him mm-hmm. he was strutting around tampa the other night doing the turns his back to the crowd he either was it like a professional wrestler or mussolini god, yeah. he's awesome he's my guy <laughs> <laughs> what was Art's problem? I don't know. Art Bell. We were just talking about Art Bell, who died uh, April 13th. Uh, died of a uh, a prescription drug cocktail of oxycodone, hydrocodone, uh, Valium, and a muscle relaxant. That's a he, lot of pain relief. You know, all those nights he stayed up all night. Uh, he must have been trying to catch up on his sleep. Those would they, That would seem to put you to sleep. Who's coming so. up on the ride? Who's coming up on the ride? Yeah. Well, uh, Glenn Perkins, who was on Facebook doing TV last night, will be with us. And Amy Laura Sella will uh, try to give us some insights into the uh, big scandal in Ohio State. It, which which uh, uh, is going to cost Urban Meyer his job by all accounts. What happened? Looks, Recruiting? Uh, no, no, no. Domestic abuse that he helped cover up. Oh, good lord. One of his assistant coaches, yes. Oh, okay. All right. 1500 ESPN is KSTP, St. Paul, Minneapolis. It's, uh, I don't know, 68 degrees. The